come back. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, man, how you doing? On, you good? On, I know you like yeah, that. Sir. Welcome back, Year 13. G, back by uh, popular demand. Uh, I didn't realise the first one would be such a hit. Anyway, um, yeah, welcome back. We're going to continue with this uh, podcast series of uh, biomechanics, hopefully uh, helping you revise uh, some of your knowledge and helping you towards gaining excellence. So, where did we get to? I think we finished off on third class levers. So, moving on from that, a logical progression is to talk about talk. Talk about talk. Gee, that sounds, uh, talk about talk. Right, here we go. Talk, as in T-O-R-Q-U-E. Talk. And all talk is, is basically a turning force. Don't let anyone try and make it more complicated than that. Talk is just a turning force. Okay? If you want to get into the physics of it, then talk will basically, basically equal the force times distance. Okay? Force times distance equals talk. Okay, so the greater the force that you apply, then the greater the torque. Okay, so you can think about, I don't know, let's go to the good old garage. Okay, think about taking a wheel off. Okay, the more torque I apply to a wrench, the more turning force I apply to that wrench, then obviously it's going to turn the bolt or the nut there. So the greater the force I apply, the greater the torque. Also, the longer the actual force arm, so the longer the wrench, okay, then basically the greater the torque that can be created. That's why lots of these uh, wrenches are rather long, okay? You don't get short wrenches, you get real long ones, okay? It's all to do with the length of the lever again. So a turning force, torque, okay? Let's try and put it into a practical application. So golf again. Okay, once again, the greater or the longer the arm, i.e. the longer the club, okay, the greater turning force, the greater torque we can generate. Okay, so once again, go back to that driver in the bag. It's pretty long, therefore it can create a lot of torque, a lot of turning force. Bang. Also, think about rugby. They give you that classic, don't they? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I don't know why I put on that stupid voice, um, but um, yeah, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And that's the same thing, because if you tackle someone, say, around the ankles, then you think about, you know, um, how far that tall person has got to fall, and as they fall on the way down, they are basically creating torque. They're creating a turning force, so they will hit the ground much harder, okay, with a greater force than, say, a short person like myself. I know you're thinking it, so I thought I'd better say it first. Anyway, talk. Okay, a turning force. Let's move on. What should we do now? Oh, rotation. Okay, let's talk about um, initiating rotation. Okay, so we're looking now at an eccentric force. Okay, an eccentric force. And that's one that's actually applied to an object off-center. Okay, so it's away from the center of gravity. So, for example, a ball, okay, if we apply force to that ball straight on to the, towards the center of gravity, it's going to fly nice and straight, okay, it's going to be very little kind of turning force, okay, very little rotation put on there. So, to create rotation, all I'm going to do is either go to the top of the ball or to the bottom of the ball. If I hit the ball across the top, I will create top spin, okay, it will spin around the axes. If I hit the ball at the bottom, at the back of the ball, it creates backspin. And that's exactly what we do in golf. Okay? So you think about the club face, the blade, and you think, especially think about those lofty clubs like your pitching wedge, your sand wedge. That, that blade gets underneath the bottom of the ball. We swing, we cut underneath the ball, and we initiate that force, that eccentric force. And that course is rotation. So the ball has backspin. We've all seen it on TV, those amazing golf shots onto the green. You know, the ball flies up in the air. What we don't see is the fact that that ball is spinning with backspin. Real, real backspin. It's flying away in the air. So the minute it lands on the green, it rolls backwards. Okay? Because it's rolling, it's spinning, it's spinning, it's spinning. It hits the surface, bang. And that spin on the ball will carry the ball backwards. And it looks really, really impressive when you see it done properly. Come and watch my golf. Not. Anyway, moving on. Okay, so we've got that kind of uh, rotation. 
how do we control rotation? Okay, how do we actually control rotation? Well, we can obviously try and stop it. Okay, so we apply a force in the opposite direction to counteract it. Also, let's talk about ourselves over rotating. Okay, everyone must have done it when you've walked over, say, uh, a curb and you feel like you're going to fall over. The arms come out, you do the old ducky kind of arm waving kind of action, okay, to bring yourself back up. Okay, you've seen it. People get to the edge, they do the whoa, 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 whoa. They kind of move those arms backwards. Okay, so we try and counteract the rotating force. Okay, not difficult and not hard. If we make our base of support wider, just like in golf, when we're teeing off, we don't tee off with our feet close together and then swing that club because the rotation would actually take us out of our base of support and we would fall over. Okay, think about some of your initial clips that you've, uh, that you've videoed of your golf swing. Lots of you over rotate once you've done your follow through. Okay, golfers, what we're looking at doing, a nice wide base, shoulder width apart. Okay, when it, that's our kind of stance when we approach the ball. So when we swing, we can accommodate that movement within the base of support. If we can accommodate movement within the base of support, we stay stable, we stay upright. The minute our center of gravity falls outside, if we take our line of gravity outside our base of support, then that's when we fall over. Okay, so pretty easy going there. That's how we counteract it. Let's move on now to a bit of force summation. I love force summation. Well, don't love it. I sound like I'm getting really excited. But force summation, okay? Force summation is what makes good athletes even better, okay? So we're looking at why is it that certain athletes have got that edge, and nine times out of ten, it's because of force summation. Why is it someone can hit a golf ball further than someone else? Why can someone in cricket hit a ball further? In baseball, how can they strike that ball further than anyone else? In swimming, how can they're more powerful in the water? I guarantee that it will come back to a good technique, but that has come from force summation. Okay, so all force summation is is basically making sure that we use all our muscles, okay, in sequence to produce the actual outcome. So, just like anything, let's for example take shot put. That's a great example. Shot put. We start off in a kind of crumpled position at the back of the circle. The first movement is basically the, the, the leg extending. Okay, The leg extends. So it's the big muscle groups of the quadricep coming through there. As that um, extends, we then get the, the body twisting, the body twisting round. So you've got the, all, your, all your lats, um, the latissimus dorsi in the back pulling you around, your abdominals coming into that. Your arm then comes round. You've got your deltoids pushing it, your biceps extend and triceps extending the arm. Okay, and then you get that push away, the head flicks round, and then the final thing are those little fingers just clicking together. So that whole linking of movement, okay, it's the use and um, sequence of kind of body parts that actually create force summation. If we were just to stand there at the front of the circle and just kind of push our arm out, I guarantee that we cannot um, get it as far as someone that's actually put their body through that kind of linking sequence. Can you visualize that? As I'm talking to you, I'm actually doing the shot, but, well, kind of sat here in a chair anyway. So, you know, ha have a go at doing that. Have a go at just kind of thinking about how that shot putter works. Now we come back to golf. Okay, let's think about golf. It's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Okay, so I've got my swing going on. It links, okay? So we, we take it back. We're, we stood there in our stance. We take the club up. So we're in that wind-up position, and then we release it, okay? So the arms come down, okay? We're extending those arms with the club, and then the body twists and turns. The hips come around. You know, the arms get into it. We hit the ball, and we follow through. That is force summation. That's the link. Okay, people, it's so easy. We've got to get the timing correct, okay? So not only have we got to use the body parts, we've got to get the timing correct, Another thing that helps is by stretching out, so to make sure that we get full range of motion, okay, we stretch, it, we stretch out our limbs as much as we can, okay, that's why with the golf swing, okay, the arms are nice and straight whenever we swing the club, okay, if we've got a flexion at the elbow, we're not going to generate as much force, nice straight limbs, okay, we stretch those out as much as possible, we get as much range of motion, so it could be from the shoulder joint, 
okay so we're using that ball and socket joint to give us full range of motion arms and our limbs extended okay using it all in the right sequence and order that is for summation we put those all puppies together and we get a great performance okay so for summation it's not hard but hey it's essential and it makes the difference between good athletes poor athletes you can look at for summation in any action next time you see Dan Carter okay taking his conversion okay for summation in action right there in front of you and it looks pretty good okay it looks pretty good all right think about javelin throwing okay think about the baseball hitter next time you see sport on TV I want you to think about for summation okay using those body parts using them in the correct order with the correct timing stretching their limbs out okay and getting full range of motion for summation it's a winner and it's easy and it applies to golf right I better sign off that 10 minutes goes real fast in here okay well um, I hope you've enjoyed it I'll um, get this up on uh, Oh, we're now on iTunes. How fantastic is that? We're now on iTunes, so you can link to iTunes, download me from there, listen to me in bed. Oh, sounds a bit naughty, but you can, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye.